I'm Audrey Niffenegger and I'm part of the exhibition Leda and the Swan. Most of the work I make is on paper. I have made a lot of prints over the years, also drawings and paintings and photographs. The work that's in the exhibition is a linoleum cut and the first time I ever made a print in my life it was in a linoleum cut. Most of my work is narrative in some way. Uh, I'm also a writer and a lot of the stories I tell are about women. Frequently, things I've worked on involve transformation, animals, birds especially, and uh, the theme of Leda and the Swan was very attractive. It really speaks to things I've been thinking about for years. When I was first invited to make a piece about Leda and the Swan, the myth itself has to do with rape and an invasion and a kind of overwhelming... I was recovering from surgery for colon cancer and last year I had had surgery for breast cancers. These surgeries are also an invasion of the body and you're left with scars. And so when I started to think about Leda, I was also thinking about surgery and the way that uh, doctors get access to your insides these days. Two things came together in my head and I thought, okay, this is about Leda and her experience, but it's also about me and my experience, which is, to be clear, not an experience of rape and not a bad thing, but it felt very strange. and. So the piece is about that feeling that your body isn't quite yours. I put on the piece the various places where I have scars from the surgeries. The neck is coming in down here and coming out up here and kind of wrapping around here. The gesture of the swan is protective but also invasive. It's autobiographical and also reflecting on people's experiences of their body being sometimes not quite their own. The paintings by Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci are very tender. They're very calm and Leda seems very accepting and uh, placid. There's no hint of violence or any struggle. And um, I think that uh, a, lot of, a lot of these stories were essentially excuses uh, to do a female nude. Sometimes these paintings don't survive or they only survive in copies because uh, the subject matter was so touchy. It's interesting to me looking at those work. It looks like kind of a lovely experience, like you would, you would definitely be all in because she looks so happy. And um, when I go back and read the original source material uh, and you think about what that would be like really in reality to experience something like that. It doesn't, the, the feeling of that doesn't match up to the feeling in those paintings. Uh, so I, I felt like the painters are definitely using that as a starting point, but it's really about something else. For me, Leda is someone who has no agency. The way the myth is constructed, she's not got a choice. For me also, there's echoes of the Virgin Mary. Nobody seems to be asking these young women back there what they want. And so uh, I think of the myth as representative of uh, a lot of women who just are viewed as uh, objects. I find myself wondering what she wanted, but in the myth it doesn't really matter. The idea of a black swan, um, the phrase has come to mean something very unusual, a rare occurrence. And the reason I wanted to invoke the idea of a black swan has to do with how I felt about having cancer. You know, you just don't really expect that things like that will happen to you. And this idea that your own body might betray you, but also that some outside force might come and just overwhelm you like a wave. I think that uh, the idea of a black swan would apply in both situations. The swan was not a god. 
he was only a disease. Leda was just a girl, made of ordinary things. Blood and guts, night terrors, bright ideas and abandoned notebooks. She didn't know she was being ravished until it was too late. She was constructed to be invaded. She was taken over cell by cell. The swan said, is this love? No, Leda said, you are a stranger. The swan said, if you won't love me, at least let me warm myself with your dreams. I need my dreams, use your own, Leda replied. I have no dreams. My sleep is made of black water, said the swan. Let me in, I want to be you. No, said Leda, you can't dream, so you can never be me. The swan practiced dreaming, but forgot every morning and had to begin again. Leda dreamt she gave birth to two large eggs and absentmindedly left them on a park bench without discovering what might hatch. She dreamt of enormous wings and flexed her fingers in her sleep, anticipating flight. The text is a little more lighthearted, a, a little bit more humorous. The text was trying to point people a little bit more at the subject matter I was getting at. You might not immediately identify what was going on. And I find often in my work that because words can do a lot of things that images can't do and vice versa, images can give you emotion and facial expression and gesture very precisely. But what words can do is to name things and refine things and to, to say in the piece of writing, it's not about a god, it's about a disease, just to kind of direct people's ideas about what we're talking about here. I think it's enormously helpful to have a digital aspect, both because the work in the gallery can be experienced by anybody who happens to be able to get to London during that period of time. I know a lot of people who just aren't in London who were very excited to be able to see it, even if from afar. And also because once the show is over, it'll continue to have a presence on the internet. And that's really helpful to me, and I think to other people who wanted to see it. Because my piece is so large, it's eight feet tall and about five feet across. It's nice for people to be able to see it in digital form. It's not the same. The two experiences are different. It's nice that you can have both. I was grateful to be able to see the show digitally because I'm in Chicago and I wasn't able to be in London for the show, so I'm one of those people who is only going to see it online. Uh, so I thought it was terrific that it was available. <laughs>